Uh, Simon, in the meantime, we, we absolutely must turn our attention to one of the most flabbergasting, jaw-dropping contract deals possibly ever seen in football. I'm talking about Kylian Mbappe signing long-term at Paris Saint-Germain. So it's a three-year deal. It's a million quid a week in wages. It's a hundred million pounds in a signing on fee. And there are all sorts of bonuses for goals, for Champions League performances, for Ballon d'Ors. And he has control over certain of his image rights. So his representatives must be thinking uh, they've, they, they've won the Euro millions. I mean, they literally have. They mm-hmm. literally have. Yep. And now our colleague uh, here at TalkSport, Julien Laurent, has come out with uh, what he feels Mbappe's influence looks like um, since his contract was signed and going forward. Have a listen. So he signed the new contract, I think, in the afternoon on Saturday, like maybe 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. At 11, Leonardo, the sporting director, is sacked because Kylian Kylian didn't like him. They they couldn't work with each other. And then... Luis Campos, who is the former, if you remember, sporting director at Monaco, Lille, very, very highly respected, amazing eye for scouting, data, all of that, who worked with Kylian at Monaco, which is the name that Kylian put forward in Paris. He's arriving now as the sporting director. So he will have he will have a lot of weight in what he says. He's not going to pick up the phone and say to Zinedine Zidane, hey, why don't you come to PSG? This is the contract I'm offering you. This is not that. But they will certainly consult him on, on big choices like those. So uh, from what Julian is telling us, as if the money's not enough, yeah. as if all these bonuses isn't enough, Mbappe's got a fair bit of clout. So much so, yeah, I'll join and I'll take all that dough. That's fantastic. Yeah. As for Leonardo at the top of the club, I'm not having him get rid of him. So they did. Yeah. Yeah. So who do you want, Killian? Well, he seems to have recommended Luis Campos, who probably got the phone call, come and join us, and he is. Yeah. Have you ever heard anything of a player having such power? Allegedly. Well, I mean, again, if, if if these are to be believed, I mean, obviously we reported a while ago that Erlen Harlem was going to get a million pounds a week, and he and he and he didn't. So we have to take some of these things with a pinch of salt. But let's just go down the line that there is no smoke without fire. First of all, I think the deal is an obscenity. The level of finances is obscene, and whilst I don't agree with Javier Tebas's ranting, the La Liga president or chief executive that's yeah. going against PSG yeah, because it's his league that started this ridiculous race to the bottom with the Galacticos with the Galacticos he's and the got, biggest transfer memory. fees and yeah. all this. so he's a hypocrite yeah. right? but the bottom line is is that PSG and their motivations are, are not the right ones for football they are it's unbelievable that they can get around financial fair play the way they seem to be and the the president of of, of PSG sits as on the executive committee of UEFA, sits as the as the head of the European Club Alliance, and it, it, it appalls me that they are being able to run amok with football because this is not about organic natural growth in football. This is about manufactured destruction of football through finances and advancing regimes. But going to Mbappe, can't blame the kid for taking this money. If people are stupid enough to give him a hundred million pound sign on or euros, or whatever it is, a million pounds a week, and God knows what else. That's offensive in, in itself. In itself. Then if you start to move into this ridiculous territory of a player, a player is going to tell you, or have an input, or have some validity to his thinking about who he will play for, yeah, who the manager works for, and who they will sign. Now, you can make the argument, and people will say, well, don't you have leadership um, groups inside football yes to make sure that players understand their responsibility when they're performing on the pitch and that they do the right things for the football club not to get the players to determine the direction in which a football club's administrative functions are being fulfilled it's absurd it's obscene it's preposterous it could only happen in a club like PSG and we should be looking at this just not just from a financial point of view I'm not suggesting that players are not capable of having validity in their opinions. Of course. I rail back against Martin talking about player welfare and having players on committees because all we ever listen to is what they don't want to do rather than what they're getting. The, all of these players tell you that they play too many games, yeah. tell you not, but they don't tell you that they've got more money than they could ever believe in their lives as a result of playing all of yeah, these games. Yeah. I mean, so Julian's saying to us... That Mbappe said, get rid of Leonardo, and they did. Well, yeah, I mean, if we believe that to be the case, it makes a great headline. And if they, if PSG are that 
puny as a management regime, which I would suspect they are because their motivations for me are not for the well-being of football. This is why people sit there and they get up in arms about the European Super League and things of that nature. These kind of despicable, obscene financial deals are killing football. Well, and they see, cause the problems that we're having. Yeah. Everton, financial fair play, yeah. governance. Arguably, arguably, it's being alleged by La Liga that, that, that PSG have got losses of 700 million euros over three years. How is that in any shape or form complying with financial fair play? Well, you say that, Simon, and then in the same breath, we hear from the PSG president, Al Khalafi, yeah. Nasser Al Khalafi, who's basically telling everybody, go do one about Mbappe. Yep. He says, money's not the most important thing for killing Mbappe. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's why staying in La Ligue. 100 million signing on fee, 1 million a week in wages. But that's not important for Killian. There's another club in Spain that can pay way more than us. I mean... Who's that then? Who's that then? The, he's saying Real Madrid. The sports project was the most important point for Mbappe. In other words, I like what you're trying to do here and I'm buying into the project. You're sure, Killian? Well, uh, We've got that. To be fair, Jim, if if you're going to give him the head cook and bottle washer title, yeah, you, you know he he makes the decisions. That he'll be choosing the kit next. Yes, he'll be choosing the advertising. He'll be choosing every aspect. He'll, he'll be choosing the configuration of the stadium. Yeah, if you, if, if you extrapolate this up, it's ridiculous. Well, that's right. He says Javi Tebas uh, of La Liga is worried that Ligue 1 in France becomes stronger than, than La Liga. How can it possibly well, that's be? Never going to happen. No, because there's one team in it. I mean, Lille won it the other year. Granted. Case in point that that proves this proves the argument. Yeah, but as a matter of course, PSG dominate that league and win nothing in Europe. But it's surely El- Al Khalafi's final line, Simon, that says everything about how they do business, because he finishes up. We have Mbappe; he stays with us, and the rest, honestly, I don't care. And therein lies the problem. People say that financial fair play is to stop the evolvement of the new generation of football clubs. And 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 they advance the argument that if you don't, if you didn't have financial fair play, protects the cartel. But the alternative argument is that you've got people like this that have no concern about the well-being of the ecosystem of football, will do precisely what they want, and the drag and tag effect of it is everybody else gets dragged along by it. Players become the influence. No, you're not. You're not only giving them the money. In this ridiculous scenario, if it's to be believed you're also giving them a degree of control over the direction of travel of a football club. And it's gone too far now. I use the expression, the lunatic's run in the asylum. He's a player. He's a player. That's the end of the discussion. Yeah. He's a player. And as, as that, and, and as that should be the case, he gets the prerequisite reward for being an elite footballer. And if anybody, anybody believes that's a £100 million sign-on, and a million pound a week, well, careful when that hyperinflation lands at your football club and an owner doesn't want to fund that and subsequently your football club finds itself in either financial jeopardy or can't compete because of PSG, yeah. because of Manchester City, because of what might happen at Newcastle. And people in those clubs will turn around and say, you're the bitter ex-failed football <laughs> club owner. It doesn't like I, I, I couldn't care less. I care about the game and the equality and the organic growth. Football yeah. didn't get to this point where player salaries at this level because of its own legitimate growth. It got there because, first of all, an oligarch walked through the door, then a Middle East consortium walked through the door, and then you've got this. Yeah. And it is anybody in their right mind would look at this and say it's an obscenity. I'd love to it's see an obscenity. the expression in Mbappe's representative's faces when Al Khalafi said, so Killian, we're going to pay you £156 million over three years. Yeah. Uh, we'll give you £100 million for signing on. I mean, honestly, it, it, but the it influence, beggars belief. But the influence, and there's one, Simon, Tony the Villa fan. Does Simon agree with me? Do you not think we'll see Newcastle players on this kind of thing in coming Probably, years? But the influence this man has, this guy sits on the UEFA Executive Committee. What, Al Khalafi? Yeah, this guy, this guy sits within the framework of the European Club Association. These guys and this motivation and this agenda, which is not for the well-being of football, has influence. And it isn't just the soft influence they want politically to be able to legitimise those countries that they represent. It's actually the influence they want in football, which will kill football. It'll kill football. It'll kill the pyramid in this country. And people think it's a game. They think shouting for more money to be paid for players and pay more for transfer fees. And yeah. get this. They think it, but what it's doing is systematically ruining football. 
The money is nuts. And the PSGs of the world are at the front of the queue for the ruination of football. I mean, Paul's echoing everything you say, Paul Evertonian. This money is nuts, guys. The sooner wage caps come in, exactly. by law, the better. Exactly. Yeah. Paul, thank you for that. It's quarter to 12. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.